Hey, everybody, welcome to Journey Through the Generations. And I bet you're surprised to hear from us. <laughs> it has been longer than we thought it would be. For but real. we're back. Yeah, we're back. And uh, we thought that we would bring you an episode um, about the 1950 census. So if you are a family historian, if you just have a fleeting interest in genealogy, you've probably heard that on April 1st, um, the 1950 census came out. Yes. and Which people are all excited about. Yes, and it was in all the news that I read, because I read a lot of genealogy news, and I have follow a lot of genealogists and family historians. So my social media and email and things of that nature were flooded with the 1950 release of the census. Yeah, and this is the... The first one that we that have come out since we have been researching our families, at least for me. For you, yes. I started researching in um, 2011. So that's when all the buzz was about the 1940 census being released in um, 2012. So I had just started my research when that one was released. Yeah, and I think what's exciting about 1950 is that we're old enough that we're going to see people that we actually know and are maybe are still alive. Yes. So they're going to be upwards of 72 years old. <laughs> yes. Right? At least. Yes. But, um, but, you know. I mean, it's exciting because yeah. that's part of, you know, doing the research is you're researching your family. So you're always looking for those names that you know, that you grew up with. Um, and especially if it's somebody like a parent or an aunt or an uncle that was very close that now you can actually see their name on a census. That's exciting. Yeah. And at first I wasn't like that excited about it. Mm-hmm. I was like, OK, I'm going to see my mom and dad. Well, no, my mom's name. I mean, my dad's mm-hmm. name in there. And OK, that's cool. You know, but that's probably about it. But then I started thinking, I was like, no, I can probably get some questions answered Mm -hmm. because I have this whole part of my family that I or my biological family that I've never met, don't know. And I'm putting some pieces together. And I think 1950, the census will answer some questions for me. Yes. So I'm looking forward to being able to go through it. Yeah, and for me, my parents were born in 51 and 52, so I have to wait until the next one um, in 2032 um, to see my parents' name. But Which is ridiculous. <laughs> we'll we'll talk that. about that in a minute. Um, but I'm able to piece together um, like where my grandmother was on my mom's side. She um, had left home and it was in school and it was right before she got married to, um, my grandfather. So I can piece together where she was during this time. Um, so it's, it's just exciting because again, as genealogists and family historians, we wait 10 years for a census to be released. So it gives us time to, you know, Definitely use the sense that's out there, but we're always itching for that next one to come. Yeah, and I know the census is used to help um, figure out how many represent- representative states are going to have mm-hmm. um, in the federal government and you know, some other things. So I know the census itself is important, yeah. you know. For to determining do. you just stuff like that, yeah. And I think it helps the pun, the, uh, helps decide who gets certain funding mm-hmm. and how much and all and that how, stuff. Yeah, how big your city or county yep. has grown in the last 10 years, things like that. Yep, so all that stuff's great. I'm not arguing that. I just wanted to give just a little bit of background. I know everybody who's listening knows all about the census, but the first census that was recorded in the United States was in 1790. Um, and then another big thing about the census would be the 18... Did I say 1790? 
Yes, it is. Okay. And then the um, 1870 census is the first census where all African Americans were actually on the census by name because that is following the Civil War. And then another thing is that there is no 1890 census recorded because there was a fire. And so all of them were destroyed. So we have a bit of a gap between 1880 and 1900 because there's not a 19, an 1890 census. So all of those are facts, census facts. <laughs> You're welcome. Good for people to know, especially our um, listeners who are new um, to genealogy and and researching the family history. It doesn't make sense to go start looking for, you know, 1890 records and they might not be there. Right. Because... There might, I think, a few yeah. got saved, saved mm-hmm. but not a lot. The majority of You're them, right. I would say probably over 90%. Yep, so it doesn't make sense to use a, you know, a ton of time searching for an 1890 census that's not there. Mm-hmm. So all that's, you know, important, and I believe people should participate in the census and all that stuff. Um, so that's cool. But one of the questions I asked you was, when do you think we'll start seeing the difference in people who responded to the census and those who didn't? Because it seems like to me, you know, in past census, sis, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure. But in the past, they... Um, it seems like a lot of people um, answered. Oh, yeah, responded. it was a big deal. And probably because someone was home all the time. But we're getting to a point in time to where either people aren't home because everybody in the household is working. Um, you know, we got empty homes. We got, you know, people who just don't want to respond. Correct. So... I think we're getting up about to that time. I would say probably 2000, 2010. And I say that because I think 2010 is when you first had the option to do it online. And I think most people probably decided they were going to do it online and then forgot about it and never did it. Um, so I think the more, the closer we get to us doing it online and not on paper, the fewer people will have to do it. I don't agree. Okay. And I'll tell you why I don't agree. I've been helping review names for the 1950 census. Mm-hmm. And I have seen a ton of recordings as either vacant, a vacant house, or not at home, mm-hmm. or something like that. But they were all, they went back mm-hmm. and captured those people so they're on different lines mm-hmm. I which think is if, if they tell you where to go mm-hmm. which line to go to on what page or whatever mm-hmm. so that's cool so that's 1950 that we're already seeing that i think when you get into like 1970 1980 you're going to start seeing a lot more people not answering the census at all and then of course, it's going to get worse as you get go along, I think. So you so. think they're not there initially, and then when they come back, they're still not going to answer, mm-hmm. or they're not there? Yeah. So then I I'm think people just you saying no. Yeah, I think they're probably only going to go twice. They're not going to just keep going back. Right. They can't go forever. Mm-hmm. So Because, yeah, they have a deadline. Yeah. So okay. I feel I mean, like you just, that's when you, you know, you have to think about the times we were in at that time. You know, we just didn't have a lot of people in the home, you know, people, husband and wife was out working, you know, doing, you know, whatever, going to school Mm -hmm. and then all of that stuff. And then you had this level of, you know, mistrust in the government of using their information. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I I don't know all the details about all that stuff. I just, that's what I feel. I would, I mean, maybe you know the answer to this. I don't. But is the 1950 census the first census where they had the option to say, 
they're not at home. I went to this house and they're not at home. I'm going to come back. So if they didn't have that option in 1940, we wouldn't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I didn't even think about it. I didn't. Because every I didn't know they has had different option. questions. They there was can, an option to answer. I mean, it was required to answer the census back in the day. No, I'm not? saying. No, I'm saying. Was it required for the census taker to document? I went to this house, but they were not there. Oh, yeah. Because every census has. I mean, the same questions: date, name, date, date of birth. Are you married? Sex, um, age, religion. Not religion, uh, race, but then other different senses have other options. They change every year. Like the 1940, they asked you if you had a radio. Um, in the 1930 census, they asked you where you lived five years prior in 1925. So every census has a little bit of a different question somewhere. So maybe that became an option in 1950 and not in 1940, and we didn't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. And, hell, I can't even remember what questions they asked on the census we filled out in right. whatever it was, 2020, I guess? Mm-hmm, 20. Um, online. So, anyway. Okay, so the, the big part of this conversation with the census is I wanted to – um, understand why the census comes out every 72 years. I should play that number. As you have heard in past episodes of um, our podcast, I have mentioned that, you know, I think it was ri- ridiculous that mm-hmm. it's every 72, 72 years. And I think I've gone so far <laughs> as to say that it's just stupid. Mm-hmm. That's correct. But Honestly, I did not, you know, I I did not research why. Mm -hmm. It just in my gut, it felt like it was it was stupid. So I was like, well, this is a perfect time to talk about the census with it with it coming out a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me just look it up and figure out why the 72 year rule exists. Now, in my mind, and what we've always heard was what? It was privacy. Privacy issues for the public, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, Which the government does with most records. Yeah, so that part made sense, you know, in my mind. But I still thought it was really ridiculous mm-hmm. because 2020. it's 2022 yeah. and right. we can get everybody's address, phone number, race, job, whatever, Online and the government certainly does have it. So right. So that's just my you know my personal opinion. And in remembering what information is on the census, it's your name, your age, your race, where you lived, and if you're married. Yeah. So all that stuff is. So it's not like it has your social on it or right. things like that. Exactly right. So I just think it's ridiculous. Anyway. So I thought I would bring to you guys the reason why the 72 year rule exists. And I'm going to try not to get too detailed because you can. But basically, the um, the question I had was why 72? Okay. That's why I mean, it's not a common number. Yeah. Why 72? It doesn't make sense. Well, it, it was said in, in the past that 72 years was the lifespan so of people so let's just use that okay but it had, they've gone back and looked at uh data the statistics and according to the National Center for Health life expectancy was closer to 73 years so it seemed okay. like they would choose 73 maybe they wanted an even number well it turns out that that wasn't the case okay. So they found letters from uh, the Census Bureau director and the National Archives director coming to an agreement. And these letters were sent in 1952. And they came to an agreement that 72 years was going to be the year, number of years before they disclosed any information from the census. But it still didn't answer the question why 72? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they came up with that Yeah, number. didn't make sense. So, 
Back in 1934, when the National Archives was first established, the Census Bureau said, no, we don't we don't think the record should be kept um, at the National Archives. We have a building for it. We're going to keep it. But not much later after that, then during World War Two, the Census Bureau people changed their mind. <laughs> a war make you do that. Yeah, and in a press release, the Census Bureau said, hey, you know what? The records through 1870, they're not considered confidential. Confidential, We'll send it to you, and it could be used by private individuals. The year that press release came out was 1942. Okay. 72 years after the 1870 census. So they just... Kept it going because it was because it was 72 years at the time. He said, just release 1870. And before that, mm-hmm. they just kept it going every 10 years. That's 72 years. Okay, like a tradition. Yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> it like wasn't... it was no real like reason mm-hmm. for it. It was just like they made the decision in the 72nd year. And that's what it, that's you know, what we're going to do. Yeah. So it's believed that that 72 years was just being used as a guide ever since, you know, the 40s, Mm -hmm. Um, 1942, I believe, something like that. Yeah, 1942. And so they just, it was a guide. Mm -hmm. So they just kept doing 72 years. It's not a, still not a definitive answer to the question. And, and the law, it became law in 1978. Mm -hmm. So It was just still a guide all the way up to 1978. Then it became, you know, law. Yeah, so by that time they had released one in 42, 52, 62, 72. Mm -hmm. Let's make it a law and we're going to continue what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, there's still not a definitive answer. I saw nothing in my search that said it's 72 years because of this. Um, But... I I agree with this that I found and this information was found on a uh, uh, a story that NPR did Mm -hmm. about it. And I'll put the link to this article uh, so you can go and read it in the description of this episode. Um, That's where I got my information from. Um, So I agree with this. You know, the author of this article and the story, it sounds like that makes sense to me. It was 72 years when they said, hey, just release 1870 and we'll just go from there. And it's been every 72 years since Mm -hmm. then. Totally makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And there's links to the documents that back up this resource. I know this research. I know we're genealogists. We're family historians. (laughs) So we look for we look for sources and things to back it up. This article has, though. So if you want to go back and read the letters that go along with it and everything, um, you can. So um, there was a couple of side notes that was in that I thought that were interesting. Um, <clears throat> so um, the 1900 census, there was a delay in the release mm-hmm. of them. It didn't happen in, in uh, whenever it was supposed to. But it was because there was a disagreement on the number of years hmm. that it people should get access to. So there was you fighting back and forth. 1972? So, so that should be 1972. Okay. Hence, and probably why they did the law. Exactly. Okay. That's why the law came in 1978, because people were arguing that it needs to be less than 72, and the agreement that they made wasn't, you know, lawful. It was just a guide. And then 1978, the government said, Look, we, we're done fooling with y'all. <laughs> y'all. We're just going to make this law in it's 72. Well, I will say, if that happened in 78, you know what happened in 1976. I was born. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> um, but, you know, Roots came out. And so after Roots came out, Alex Haley's Roots, the movie, well, the book and the movie, then everybody was, you know, according to all the people who were here that, Remember, everybody was flooding all the libraries looking for all these census records. And so I can only imagine all of the, you know, hoopla and why can't I get this census? I need this census. Why is this the only one out? Mm-hmm. Um, 
in a small amount of time, a lot of people were looking for census records. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that that law was a few years after Roots. Yeah. Because that's when the genealogy world like exploded. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that has something to do with it. You can see how I can I can tie Roots back to everything. Girl, you crazy. So I did realize, too, that um, I don't remember the year, but at some point, the Census Bureau allowed people to look at census records um, before they came out mm-hmm. in public. You still can. Um, you had to be doing legitimate, like, educational research. Mm-hmm. You had to be a professional genealogist and then some other things mm-hmm. that you, you That's had all to correct. be. Yeah. And then back then, you couldn't go, like, take it away. Mm-hmm. You had to go into the building Look at the film, that is whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's still. So the case. I thought you, that was interesting. Yeah, you have to register and you have to pay, and it's a thing to do. But you yeah. can see any census that you want to. You just have to go to the National Archives in Washington, register, pay, and get approved, and all that stuff to see like the nineteen eighty census. Yeah, I know. Which you, would be the first census I'm on. Yeah. I know you didn't really have a strong opinion about this, at least not as strong as I did. But what's your take? What do you think? Do you think it's or are you just indifferent? Don't care. I'm I'm a little bit indifferent, but I can see how in this time that we're living in in 2022, where you have the Internet and you can basically look up anything you want, especially in the past, you know, if it's. 25 years or later, you're pretty much free game to be able to find it. Um, And again, there's not any information. There's no social security number on there. There's not any, you know, really information that would be private in today's standings. So I can see how it's unfavorable that we can't get these records that would be able to help our research. But then again, I know the government and how they are with, you know, government records and things like that. And I think it, you know, I can understand why they want to do it on one hand. On the other hand, I'm like, really? I mean, I can go online and probably find anything I want from 1980, but I can't get a census record. Yeah. Bottom line for me is I still think it's stupid Mm -hmm. um, and ridiculous. That it's still 72 years. I believe 72 made sense back then. Mm-hmm. It does not, however, in my opinion, make sense today. Now, I'm not saying release everything up to 2000, you know, 2010. I'm not saying that. But we can at least get, you know, 1960 and 70. I believe so. At the very least. And. Yeah. And I could probably make an argument to 1980, but I'm not going to get greedy. You know, (laughs) give me 1960 and 1970. And I mean, I think that'd be what, 52 years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what, what are we doing here? You know? And so I know it's one of those things because it's law, it'll probably be something difficult to really change at this point. Right. But you should start a petition. I wouldn't be. You know, unhappy if some government official said, you know what? We need to change this. They've worked on far less. Oh, yeah. So, you should write your senator. <clears throat> so, you know, somebody could do something. So, anyway. Well, I totally agree. I I would agree with we should have the 52-year rule, I think, would be totally acceptable. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to change. No, I don't think so either. Um and doesn't change my opinion though. No, it doesn't. But at the end of the day, the census is a very good record to use. It's very useful. Um, and that's where most people begin their research with vital records and census records. That is the basis of all like beginning genealogy. Okay, so we got a few minutes left. So I will, you know, one of our goals is always trying to help new researchers helping with their um, family research give one or two tips to people out there who may not have used the census before um, or just new to using it a couple of tips just to help them navigate the census 
Um, one tip I would say is to once you you're on a, a search, um, a website like a family search, and you find your family, um, I would suggest that you actually look at the whole page and not just the highlighted portion, um, because a lot of times families lived close by Mm -hmm. neighbors right down the street. So maybe you'll find your aunt and uncle, your, you know, father's brother and sister may have lived next door and they're just right above them or a couple of names above them. So I always look at the entire census um, for names, especially last names, because you never know who you might find that's a relative. Yep. And a street name that's on the census may not all everybody on that street may not be on the all the same pages. Mm-hmm, correct. So you're so you gonna go, wanna look mm-hmm. through quite a few pages, mm-hmm. take your time and go through it. You just gave me a tip. What do you do when you're looking for a specific name um on the census and you're in the area? You remember you was like how oh, you look, how oh, you search. Yeah. I basically I enlarge it from the site that I'm in. I actually click on the census record and I enlarge it so I can see it very well and then I just scan the entire um, record for that last name because if I know I'm looking for say for instance I'm looking for Denson anything with a D is going to stick out so if I see Denton I'm going to look at that and say oh is that my people because they could have misspelled it so I'm going to take a closer look at that Denton family even though my family's name is Denson because you never know because people humans are doing this and they could make mistakes so I zoom in and I look at all of the names and try to zoom in and and find that last name that surname yeah that I'm looking for Uh, my two tips is um, understanding that people did this like you just said and everyone's handwriting isn't very good it's not it's not so (laughs) Um, so if you run across, you know, a census record where you can't read the handwriting, take a screenshot of it oh, and share it idea. out with people out there. Mm-hmm. They Social may media. not be genealogists, but they can maybe read that kind of handwriting uh, or share it in any genealogy groups that you're a part of mm-hmm. and see if you can get some help. So we'll take it to the library. Yep. So do that. And then um, I would also say. I use Ancestry and Family Search to search um, for census records. I like I like both of them, but I think I like Ancestry's better okay. than Family Search, and so use whatever you feel comfortable with. But they are a little bit different, mm-hmm. and I yeah. think Ancestry you navigate it a little bit better right. than um, than. Uh, than family search but i will say family search is a free site yes so exactly right you You can use it it for free Mm -hmm. every day of the week if you want to for the rest of your life that's a good point you just have to register with your email address yep so you might have to sacrifice being able to use it yeah you know in a good way Mm -hmm. for free you know right which we totally advocate no i free is my friend yeah so all right so as we get to um leave here in just a minute Why don't you tell everybody where they can find information about the 1950 census and where they can do some, you know, minimal research? Mm -hmm. Okay, Um, you can go to um, the 1950census.archives.gov to be able to do a minimal search um, of for your relatives at this time. And... um, and I think it's just surnames and it's, it's, counties and cities it's, that you um, can search. Yeah, you can search first, last name, and county and state. Um, or you can just search surname, county, and state. Mm-hmm. And it may or may not come up um, right now. Correct. Because... I mean, it was just released. It was just released, and it hasn't been indexed yet. Right. So the I remember when the 1940 census came out, it was about... A year before you could actually really search it and get in good to be able to search any state in the United States for that census. Now, we are a little bit ahead of the game as we were in technology then, so it may be quicker. But as of right now, you can search first name, last name, state and county. And if you want to get involved with the 1950 census and help review names and families and street addresses and help get 
things indexed quicker. That is correct. Um, go to I've used familysearch.org. Mm-hmm. It's really easy to use. They can walk you through how to do it. Uh, any exceptions that you need to be aware of um, or anything like that. They're releasing states, you know, kind of gradually mm-hmm. as we finish one or two. They open up another one or two. Um, I I go and re- review names almost every day, um, but they're really easy. You can get through like, you know, 200 names at least in just like 30 minutes mm-hmm. or something like that. So uh, whatever you can do to help would be, you know, greatly appreciated. Um, Because the quicker we get these names reviewed, the quicker it'll be ready to search on Ancestry and uh, Family Search. Right. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this conversation about the 1950 census. We're excited about it. We're hoping that, um, you know, we can start actually truly (laughs) searching, um, searching. for names mm-hmm. and our family and everything like yeah. that. So, um, all right. I think that's it. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts of the 1950 census. And uh, have you used it yet? Yeah. What have you found? Yeah, absolutely. All of our social media information is down below in the, uh, in the description um, of this episode. And we will talk to y'all later. Thanks guys. All right. Peace.